Hey guys, so today we're going to be testing older technology. I love testing older PC components to see how it stacks up to modern day's technology in 2023. So I'm going to be testing an i5 4690K. It's a Devil's Canyon processor. So this processor came out when I was in high school and I was like, wow, if I could just have this processor, I will never need to upgrade again. Yeah, I don't know about that, but Let's go ahead and benchmark it. We'll run some stress tests, we'll do some gaming, and we'll see how it stacks up to technology in 2023. It's gonna be super sicko mode. So before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And every video I post will be more sicko mode than the last. All right, let's get to it. So like I said, I'm testing a Devil's Canyon processor. This i5-4690K had a turbo frequency of 3.9 gigahertz, was four cores, four threads, so no hyperthreading, only supported DDR3 RAM, had a TDP of 88 watts, was using the LGA 1150 socket type. It still used the previous architecture from the Haswell 4670K, so it wasn't much of an improvement. So back in 2014, i5 processors were designed strictly for gaming. They weren't designed for people who wanted to do heavy CPU workloads. It was just a solid gaming processor. So nowadays the specs aren't too impressive, but back then that was all you needed for gaming. If I saw the specs back in 2014, I would just be like, wow. But anyways, an overview of the parts that I'm using here. Obviously I'm using the i5-4690K. I'm cooling it with an NZXT Kraken M22 cooler. I actually borrowed this processor from my uncle. He was using an Intel stock cooler and he said it was working fine. So this should be fine as long as it doesn't fail because I've had two fail already. But anyways, 16 gigs of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM, a gigabyte Z97X gaming three motherboard, and it does have an M.2 slot, which is surprising for 2014. That's pretty rare. And the drive that I'm using is actually out of an old Alienware I used to have. It's a 512 gig NVMe, nothing too fancy. I don't even think it has any cache, but it works. Using the Founders Edition RTX 3080. Honestly, it's probably gonna be bottlenecked by the processor, but we're gonna do it anyway. And it's all inside an NZXT 510 case. It is red themed because the LEDs inside are red and the heat sinks are red, so I just made everything red. I'm sure for 2014, this looked very sicko mode. Nowadays, you look at it and it's just like, meh. I guess once you compare it to my H9 Elite case, it's, it's like whatever. The first test I ran was a Cinebench test and in the multi-core test, I got a score of 3,440. Now, honestly, that score kind of sucks, especially if you compare it to an i3 12100F. You usually get in the 7,000s with that processor. So about two and a half times better with a modern i3. Now, if you want to compare it to the newest K-series i5, the 13600K, the 13600K got a little over 24,000. But like I said, this wasn't a heavy CPU workload processor. This was a gaming processor. So with a score like that, it doesn't have the power to pull the gates of hell down. The next test I ran was the Furmark test. It's a 10 minute stress test. I just wanted to see how much heat I can generate. And it's max temp hit 70 degrees Celsius. These processors didn't get too hot because they don't use a lot of power. I was only using about 64 watts. When you overclock it, you can get it closer to that 88 watts that it says it can use. Nowadays, i5s are using 100 and almost 180 watts. So with that kind of power, you should expect great responsibility and a lot of heat. So now with the gaming benchmarks, the benchmark that I ran was a Firestar Extreme test and I got a score of 14,060. Now, if you compare it to the 13600K with the same GPU, you're looking at 20,397. So it's about a 45% better score, 61% better FPS. But if you look at the physics test, which is the CPU portion, it's about a 380% increase when you go to the 13600K. Now, when you move on to TimeSpy, for some reason, I don't have the 13600K with TimeSpy. So we'll just go ahead and use another modern CPU. I'm using the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X. So 9,947 versus 17,127. So CPU test was around 373% increase. The score was about 72% better though. That's how it stacks up to modern day CPUs. So the next test I ran was the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. I ran everything at ultra 1440p and I got an FPS of 69. So the game was playable. Obviously it's not gonna give you the best performance. 
it is bottlenecked in the 3080. The 3080 is capable of giving you over 144 FPS with this game. Now, the next game I ran was Cyberpunk. I ran everything in low settings and I did turn ray tracing on. And when you're looking at it, it's okay. And right now it's like barely hit 50. It's not the greatest. And you can see that the CPU is working 100% while the GPU isn't as much. Yeah, so we ended up with an average FPS of 43.66. Don't expect the FPS to always be there. There's obviously going to be spikes. So at times the game will look very choppy, not very playable. I don't recommend it. Now, this processor does exceed the minimum requirements for Cyberpunk, but definitely not the recommended. So. I don't recommend it. Now the game I'm hoping that it does really well in is GTA 5. This game came out in 2013. This processor came out in 2014. So I'm gonna be running everything at the highest settings possible, but at 1080p, because 1080p was really what most people were trying to game in. 1440p and 4K wasn't really mainstream yet. Now the 3080 blows anything out of the water. That came out in 2014 or 2013. And the Nvidia graphics card that was new back in 2013 and 2014 was the 780 Ti. So this 3080 completely destroys that card. So this game should look and play good as ball sack, but let's go ahead and see. I mean, like I said, it's ultra everything, but my FPS isn't like the greatest. So right now I'm hitting 90, 80, 70. So if I wanted to play ultra everything in 2014, remember this is a 3080. This is way better than what a 780 Ti would have been. I'm still only getting 75 FPS. And if you look at what's working hardest, it is the CPU, it's 90, 92 to 92%. Even though this was a, an awesome gaming processor back in 2014, it just goes to show that GTA was such a crazy, crazy setup. You probably need to go with like an i7 4790K if you wanted the best performance. Overall, I'm getting at least 60 frames per second, which is what you want at 1080p, ultra everything. In today's standards, not the greatest experience, but I'm sure for 2014, this was pretty awesome. Okay, so overall, this is almost a nine-year-old processor. I don't expect it to be good by any means. For a game that came out in 2013 and pairing it with a GPU that is 250 times better than one of the best GPUs back then. It still wasn't really that impressive and it was 1080p. I wasn't playing at 1440p. Obviously the newer games are not going to play very well. The fact that it only has four cores, no hyper threading, only supports DDR3 RAM. Clock speeds aren't the greatest compared to the newer processors. Its TDP is only 88 watts. All kind of limit this processor from being a contender to modern day processors. But in about nine years, the modern day i5 13600K is a crazy big improvement. Now you could try overclocking. You could probably get your FPS up by 10, 20 FPS, which would be better. Now I love busting out older technology, testing it, seeing what good processors from that era play like and how they stack up nowadays. But I do find it interesting that they went from Haswell to Devil's Canyon, but they kept it fourth generation. Like they didn't move to fifth. They just went from fourth all the way to the 6600K, nothing in between. But I'm sure there's a reason behind that. But shout out to my uncle for letting me borrow the, the motherboard, the processor, the RAM. It's always fun to bust out old technology. See how stacks up to modern day technology. Like I said, these are very OP processors when they came out. They were very good for their time. I guess really the real question is, can this run Crisis? Yes, yes it can. The game was seven years old by the time this processor came out, so it's, it'll handle Crisis just fine. But it did play Cyberpunk at the very lowest settings. You could get at least 60 FPS. So you could still use it for gaming if you're just doing lowest settings on really any game. So I guess I kind of take that back. This processor still is a gaming processor, just don't expect any crazy good performance. Now, I don't recommend you build a new PC using this processor in 2023. There's cheaper options and better options like a basic i3-12100F will give you better performance than this processor. 
If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. If any of you are still rocking this processor, leave it in the comments below as well. Tell me if you're overclocking it, what kind of performance you're getting. I'm interested to see what you guys are getting. I hope you like the video. Please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. All right, but that's about all the testing I'm gonna go do. I might go check out that new Costco that just opened today in my area. It's like 10 minutes away. It's way better than having to drive 40 minutes to the nearest Costco. So I might go check that out. But like always, have a sicko mode day.